Today we're talking a little bit about the 12th century abbot, Aelred, Celtic, by nationality and background, and even by sort of spiritual inclination, who end up be, ended up being the uh, Cistercian and abbot in Revio in France. What makes his contribution important and unique was that he did something in med medieval spirituality that was actually rather revolutionary. If you read the medieval mystics, John of Cross, Teresa of Avila, people like that, the whole focus of their writing and their pursuit is in a deeper and more intimate relationship with God. Rarely in those writings do human relationships come into account. It is, it is the model of the lone celibate privately pursuing with all of his or her might an intimate and often mystical relationship with God. And that in parts of the church has always been held up as the kind of highest ideal. Aelred said, in essence, not enough. There has to be human interaction. And that that also, too, is a gift from God, not incidental to the Christian life, but actually quite important. And out of that, he began to write a rule for his monks that, in a way that was actually considered surprising by many, allowed for friendships. Because the sentiment at the time was that preferential relationships, said very disparagingly, within the context of a monastic house was in fact detrimental to the community life. And he said something very different. He said, no, friendships in fact are important. And out of that road, a treatise on friendship that's still worthwhile, even to this very day. He said this, and this is a quote out of this treatise on friendship. He said, there are four qualities which characterize a friend. Loyalty, right intention, discretion, and patience. Right intention seeks for nothing other than God and natural good. Discretion brings understanding of what is done on a friend's behalf and the ability to know when to correct faults. Patience enables one to be justly rebuked when needed or to bear adversity on another's behalf. Loyalty guards and protects friendship in good or bitter times. And the way the scriptures were chosen is that they in fact each reflect one of those qualities. The Ruth lesson about loyalty, where Ruth, Ruth's loyalty to Naomi the importance of the centrality of the love of God because as it says in the psalm, it is in your light that we see light. In other words, for us as a Christian, we would say, who models friendship best for us? Well, Jesus does. And he is the one who in his own revolutionary fashion said to his disciples, I do not call you slaves any longer for a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends. And introducing that word into a vocabulary about friendship with God, in fact, being actually possible. We take it for granted. It's startling, historically, and a startling insight. And then the Philippian lesson, exemplifying that kind of, the virtue of sacrifice. If there be any truth in Christ, be of the same mind. Let each one think himself not better than the other. In other words, living out a way of life that understands that friendship is something that I serve, not manipulate to get my needs met. And then, of course, Jesus' interaction with the scribe around what does it mean to love God? That action is held up for us as an example of actual of patience. You see, what's shocking and surprising about that interaction is that up until this point, the way the gospel and all the gospels are laid out in terms of Jesus' interaction with this group, the scribes and Pharisees, and they're the ones with the black hats, they're the ones who are out to get Jesus, and they are the ones who are not to be trusted. So here are the enemies over here, 
and here is Jesus over here. What we have in this section is almost something like this, where not a group, but an individual, a scribe, in essence crosses the line of demarcation into the no man's land zone, and begins to actually have a conversation with Jesus, not marked by finger pointing and diatribe, but genuine inquiry. And the patience with which Jesus deals with this scribe, his willingness not to shift his position, but to speak with an incredible, out of that generosity, you are not far from the kingdom of God, both in terms of his understanding but who is the kingdom? Well, it's the one to whom he's speaking, Jesus. So it's both literally, intellectually, and spatially true. I really want to hold up the importance and perhaps even the necessity of Christian friendship, both for a healthy personal spirituality, but also really healthy in terms of the life of the local church. It takes work to form friendships. There's a brief but famous passage in the book of Sirach where the writer says this about friends. Pleasant speech multiplies friends and a gracious tongue multiplies courtesy. Let those who are friendly with you be many, but let your adversaries, no, I'm sorry, let those who are friendly be many, but let your counselors be one in a thousand. Here the distinction. For there are friends who are such when it suits them, and they will not stand by you in the day of trouble. There are friends who change into enemies and tell of the quarrel to your disgrace, disclosing the secret in which you were entrusting them. There are friends who sit at your table, but they will not stand by you in trouble. By contrast, he says, faithful friends are a sturdy shelter. Whoever finds one has found a treasure. Faithful friends are beyond price. No amount can balance their worth. Faithful friends are life-saving medicine, and those who fear the Lord will find them. Those who fear the Lord direct their friendships aright, for they are, for as they are, so also are their neighbors. Meaning, as I enter into a relationship with God, my hope and expectation is that he will teach me what it means to be a friend. In fact, in the way that he interacts with me. And that in so doing, the task and the call is to live out that kind of, as Aorid says very clearly, loyalty, right intention, discretion, and patience in a way that actually builds friendships with other people. Faithful friendships, as opposed to what we would call fair weather friends or people who are mere acquaintances. I would really want to say to you as a pastor, if you have people in your life who are your faithful friends, do not let them go unless they want to leave. In this day and age of people who literally move all over the planet at a moment's notice, it takes some work to develop long-term friendships. Most of my longest friends actually don't live here. But at the same time, they are the people to whom you turn and who will listen. And if you don't have people whom you can call literally in the middle of the night, you need a friend. Jesus never forsakes, but a part of what he does is invite us into relationships that model the love that he has for us. That's what Aelred was writing about. And it is what Jesus has given us in calling us friends. So God, show us and help us to cultivate those same kinds of friendships. Why? Because we need them. And we can be the gift of a friend to other people. Amen. Amen.